Hello everyone, we're Naranja de Marte. We're students from 8th semester of audiovisual communication at the University of La Sabana. We are Mari Jose Uitrago Martinez, Daniel Santiago Gonzalez Muñoz, Natalia Sánchez Barrero, David Santiago Montiel Triana, and Luciano Valentina Peña Sánchez. And today we'll be reviewing several games for the class Multimedia Workshop and Animation Module taught by Rigoberto Sainz. First up, we'll be reviewing Animal Crossing New Horizons. It's a game developed and published by the Japanese multinational consumer electronics and video game company Nintendo. The game was released on March 20 of 2020 for the Nintendo Switch. New Horizons is the latest version of the Animal Crossing series so far. It is a life simulation game played in real time. It is open-ended and the player's character can live a separate life with very little set plot or mandatory tasks. Players assume the role of a new resident to the town. To start, the players will have to create a customizable character to play with. Then they have the option of choosing an island layout when applying. Since the game takes place completely in real time, the seasons also change with the year, which means you have a choice in either living in the Northern Hemisphere Island or a Southern Hemisphere Island for reverse seasons. Animal Crossing New Horizons has you sail into a deserted island after purchasing a holiday package from a raccoon called Tom Nook. To begin with, all you have available to you is a tent. You will also be given a basic dwelling and a loan from Tom Nook. The primary driver of New Horizons is to go out and earn Nook Miles, the form of currency in the game, to pay off that debt by collecting bugs, foraging for saleable goods, building equipment, tending a garden, or whatever else you might find that you enjoy. New Horizons also introduces new features and mechanics, such as pole vaulting over the river, cliff construction, waterscaping, and crafting materials. While the game offers many things to explore, the core gameplay loop is simple, and it's up to you to get to know your neighbors and take advantage of your environment in order to progress. Animal Crossing happens to be a sandbox kind of game, with endless possibilities and freedom to set your own goals, which is why there are no real levels in the game, only achievements. There are also plenty of other things to do. There's a museum to fill with box, fossils, paintings, and more. You can collect shells, fruit, and seashells to sell for a profit. You can also spend time socializing and sending letters or gifts to residents and real-life friends. Throughout the game, the player is surrounded by animal villagers, which happen to be non-player characters. There are 391 villagers in New Horizons, excluding special characters. The NPCs range from being shopkeepers visitors to the player's town, hosts, and many other functions. Animal Crossing New Horizons is a single-player game with multiplayer capabilities, where seven other players on different devices can be invited via local network play or online network play. As mentioned before, there are little to no rules inside the game, which means that the player interacts however they prefer with all these characters, including the NPCs. Therefore, the game could be centered on having a lot of enemies to having none, depending on the player's preference. The interface is the first full Animal Crossing game in high definition, and it is also really easy to understand and control, even for people who had never played any of the Animal Crossing games. Generally, the game passes on a certain feeling of freedom to go at your own pace. There is no pressure to fulfill tasks or achieve progression on a deadline. Animal Crossing New Horizons has no specific goal towards an end and there isn't a real feeling of competition, which is a positive aspect for people who are looking for a soothing experience and to go along with their imagination. There are lots of customization options and plenty of activities and reasons to come back every day. New Horizons provides a space where you feel comfortable enough to do as much or as little as you feel like doing. Since it is a social game, the main goal people generally go towards is interacting with other real-life players. Animal Crossing New Horizons is a game released during a pandemic. It could be said that this immersive experience and interaction happened to come along just at the point we needed it the most. However, the only big thing we could identify is the little structure it has. For that reason, we'll give New Horizons a 9 out of 10. And now, for some of those viewers who like more multiplayer experiences, have some sort of interest in sports, and definitely like cars, 
Rocket League is the game meant for you to play. Developed by Cyanix and launched in 2015 and Steam on PlayStation 4, the game consists of rocket boost vehicles which have to defend, attack, and score goals against an opposite team. There are plenty of game modes which lets players get to know the physics of vehicle boosting and enjoy from casual, fun matches to competitive, challenging tournaments. The game is the sequel of a previous game developed by Cyanix in 2008 called Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Powered Battle Cards, a much more complex name if you ask me. It is even rumored that Rocket League was going to be named Battle Cards 2. The developer company was founded in 2000 by Dave Hedgewood and mostly contributed with software development for high-budget titles outside of the company. Throughout the dream of developing their own game, Dave and his team became obsessed with a prototype of minigame where you could control cars to play soccer, and that's how Rocket League originated. Within its launch, the game has had massive success, grossing around $70 million. It is popular around all type of players and praised by critics. In 2009, Cyanix announced that they were acquired by Epic Games. It's difficult to try and summarize the relevance Rocket League has achieved since its release date. Meant to play for all type of players because of its cross-genre nature, the game has expanded even further into cross-platform gaming, where gamers from all type of platforms can play with each other. Just imagine, you could be playing with a Nintendo Switch and your teammate with a PC, and your opponents each with a different console. It's nuts. It is rated as for everyone by ESRB. You can play from a single one-on-one -on -one match to a 4-on-4 -four -four game, where collisions, strategies and different considerations take part of the multiplayer online 5-minute match. The team who scores the most goals before the time runs out wins the game. Teams are usually differentiated by colors and each player can customize their car as he or she pleases. Controls are basic forward acceleration, jumping, boost which can be acquired by passing through lights on the floor and horizontal movement. However, the physics really show up when the car is in the air, directional dodge and on axis rotation can be used in your benefit. One of the most notable characteristics that make Rocket League such a unique and enjoyable game is its mechanics. The physics behind jumping and rocket boost vehicles could be challenging at first, but it's the process in which you get to better understand the way direction, boost, jumps, dodges work that really leaves this sort of fulfillment in players. It is not an easy game, not at all. To improve, you really must invest time and practice. Nevertheless, the enjoyment you get from scoring a goal is unremarkable. Around the game, there is even a large community that pushes the game further. Millions of thousands of players around the world expect to go pro at it. That's right, professional players. Because Rocket League is also considered an eSport. Worldwide tournaments are streamed where only the best of the best players get to compete and win large prizes. It's equivalent of the FIFA World Cup but in a video game. And also where North America and Asia completely dominate the game. Rocket League is a game where you and your friends can spend hours and hours of entertainment. When you get the hang of it, you'll become obsessed with the dynamics of goal scoring and defending. Even though it may be challenging at first. For these reasons, we'll give this game a solid 8 out of 10. In many RPG games, you face a lot of monsters. You fight them, they attack you, and you kill them, with almost no consequences whatsoever. But what if there were consequences? This is the basic idea that inspired Undertale, an indie game that was released for the first time in September 2015 to a great massive reception. However, many people wonder why so early in its release Undertale was catalogued as a cult game by journalists, critics, video game developers and fans all together. This is what we're going to explore today. 
The acronym RPG stands for Role Playing Game. This is a video game genre where the player controls the actions of one or many fictional characters that live in an imaginary world. As I stated in the beginning, most of these games are about killing everything you encounter because those characters are seen as enemies or obstacles that stop you from achieving goals. Like in the game Fallout 3, where the character lives in a post-apocalyptic scenario 200 years after a nuclear bomb attack, and he has to fight humans and monsters alike in order to save his father. Undertale completely flips around this general premise. The moment you enter the game, you meet with text that helps you understand the setting and the universe. Long time ago, two races ruled over Earth, humans and monsters. One day, war broke between the two races. After a long battle, humans were victorious, and they sealed the monsters underground with a magical spell. Mount Evot 2010X You play the game as a little child in a striped shirt who fell off the limit of the two realms and is now alone in an unknown place called the Ruins. The first character you meet is a cute little flower who introduces itself as Flowey. He seems reliable because he offers to teach you the basics of how everything works. A battle begins and he tells you that the little heart in your screen is your soul. Then he explains that in the underworld you become strong by gaining LB, and LB stands for love. The flower tries to give you love by friendliness pellets and commands you to run into them by using your keyboard. When you don't do as he says, Flowey slowly starts becoming more and more angry till his face expression transforms and starts laughing maniacally and tries to kill you. But something stops him. A lady goat comes through the screen and tells you that you are the first human there in a long time. Her name is Toriel and that it's a word play for the world tutorial because she is actually the one who explains the mechanics of the game. She explains how to interact with things, move through rooms, and solve the puzzles that you will solve ahead by pressing C or enter on PC. The most important thing that she does is to teach you how to fight with monsters, or most specifically how to not fight them. Encounters are the battles with enemies that can happen randomly or in locations that are predetermined. In a battle, you can interact with an enemy in many different ways, through the act box. The enemies must be spared or killed. It is completely up to you what you do to end the fight, but it will directly affect the outcome of the story. We will discuss that later. In the standard game that released in Microsoft Windows and OS X via Steam, you only need the four arrow keys to move in the map and to move your soul during a master attack. To select, you can use Enter or C. You can cancel or return using the Shift or X and go to menu, pressing Ctrl or C. In 2017, two years later, Sony announced that Undertale was being released in PS4 and PS Vita, and in September 2018, Nintendo released Undertale on the Switch. In this console, you can enter the joystick menu available on the remap, and remap the three options of Select, Cancel and Menu on the gamepad. In that menu, you can also switch the language between Japanese and English. It looks like a pretty standard battle system, but what makes this game stand out is that in battles you end up learning that every monster is unique and that each has its own personality. This means that the way to interact with a fight with one is never the same with another monster. Like with Napstablock, a depressed ghost with low self-esteem that stops attacking you because he's not really feeling up to it right now. Or with Icecap, a little guy with a big hat that you have to ignore despite his efforts to make you look at his hat. Monsters can attack you and you need to dodge their attempts to kill you, but the more you interact with them, you can befriend them. Toby Fox is the only person responsible for the development of the game. He's 29 years old and was born in Manchester, New Hampshire. From a young age, he showed interest in video games, like Earthbound. This series of video games, also called Mother in Japan, was later inspiration for Undertale type of animation and its main character, who wears a striped shirt, like the kids with superpowers in Airbound. Toby also learned really early in his life to play piano and the trumpet, that resulted in his love for composing and creating music. He is responsible for the writing, programming, music and some of the art of the game. The most part of the art of the game was designed by Toby's best friend, Temi Chang, including the logo, animation and more. All the art was made in Microsoft Paint and Graphics Gale, 
while the video game development was made in the platforms Game Maker and Game Maker 2. The fighting system is based in bullet hell attacks of the subgenre Shoot 'em Up. This type of game has direct influence of 1978 Space Invaders, made by Toshihiro Nikijikado. Sometimes these games are really hard, but he wanted to keep it enjoyable so the fights become more difficult as you advance. As we said before, it is up to the player if they want to show mercy and befriend the monsters or kill them in cold blood. Toby Fox established in mechanic that the first option is more difficult. Continuing with the story, Toria lets you live in her house in the ruins. However, you have to start your journey to King's Asgore Castle to cross the barrier and escape the underworld. Toriel tries to convince you to stay, but you keep insisting to leave, so she fights you to prove you can survive by yourself. This is the first boss fight of many to come. When you leave the ruins, you enter the first of the three levels, Snowden. A place like its name suggests is full of snow, where you meet two skeletons that guard the place of humans. Papyrus is a clumsy but determined character that only wants to become part of the royal guard of King Asgore. His brother Sans, on the other hand, is lazy on his job and only knows how to make funds out of everything. You meet other characters while you travel through, but before you can pass the next level you have to fight Papyrus. His fight is a bit more challenging, but if you act right, you can take him on a date. The second level is Waterfall, full of beautiful scenarios and friendly characters all along. In a given moment, Papyrus calls you to tell you that Undyne, the head of the Royal Guard, knows your existence and is searching you to kill you, and bring your soul to King Asgore. You encounter Undyne many times through Waterfall and you have to escape quickly before you run out of health and die. The last battle in Waterfall is against Undyne, and in that battle you realize that it's a fish female teenager with exceptional battle skills. And it is known the battle is more difficult, but you can befriend her and she teaches you how to cook. But she pushes you too hard and her house burns down to the ground. The final level is Hotland, where everything is surrounded by fire and lava. There you enter a laboratory where you meet with Dr. Alphys, an anxious scientist that works for King Asgore. She is also the creator of Metaton, a robot designed to capture and kill humans, but it might function because it wanted to be an entertainer, so it escaped. She reassures you that everything is okay and you don't have to worry. However, Metaton interrupts and destroys the wall and forces you to participate in a battle slash TV gaming show. When you spare Metaton the first time, Alphys is the one who will guide you through the many puzzles in this level. You have to face Metaton multiple times in various TV shows. After sparing him, you are just one step closer to King Asgore Castle. Then Alphys tells you that she has a secret and that to reach the surface, the only way is to kill Asgore and take his soul. From this point forward is where the decisions you made throughout the game start to really affect the narrative. The final battle, or well, battles, come. And there are some really, really difficult ones. And there is a point where this happens. I know it's a lot, but I will let you figure out what happens by yourself. The entertainment software rating board rated Undertale E+, that means everyone 10 years old and up. This is because the game depicts fantasy violence, mild blood, mild language, and use of tobacco. In an interview, Toby Fox said he had no target audience for this game, just any gamer with no preference of age or in between genders. This may explain the non-binary nature of the player character an androgynous figure who can be named however you want. Quickly, the game became an online phenomenon, with people obsessing with it, discussing about the different endings in forums and creating incredible fan art. Because of everything I just said, we as a group gave Undertale a rating of 10 out of 10. And in a personal note, I am a person who plays video games for the character development, complexities of the story, and of how much I can connect with it. Undertale had me hooked from the moment one until the end. Sky, Children of the Light, Where Lies in July 18, 2019 by The Game Company.
an American independent video game studio. The game company was founded in 2006 by two students from the School of Cinematic Arts at the University of California, Genova Shen and Kili Santiago, the creators of the other video games like Journey and Flower. Sky Should Not Lie is an adventure and air game. It's an online multiplayer game that allows uh, to a people to play simultaneously. The game does not have a specific audience as is designed so that anyone over 7 years of age can play it. This game has been rated ESRB everyone. The game was initially released only for the iOS platform. On April 7, 2020, it arrived on Android and it is expected to arrive on the Nintendo Switch platform in this year 20. 21. The special thing about this game is that there are no enemies. There are children of light who are in charge of recovering the star and freeing the spirit from their graves so that they return to the star. In this game, there are seven different kingdoms, all of them crowned by a huge temple that you can see in the distance. Each of these regions has a number of specific playable features as well as unique challenges and aesthetic themes. For example, in one of the magical ferns in the game, players will encounter an Isenzan rain that will force them to be aware of the light and candle, forcing them to seek shelter to prevent it from going out. The mechanics of the Sky Children of the Lights allow the player to explore an fantasy based kingdom using free roaming experience and a magical cup that grants players the ability to fly. There are seven unique realms to be seen and each one is themed around a different stage in life. In addition to these realms, there is the player home which serves as a hub. Throughout the game, the player will be encounter spirits which may be used to unlock cosmetic and expressions in return for in-game currency. The player can also find children of light which rain wingle like a collectible Ethan used to increase cave energy, allowing fertile light. Furthermore, the game heavily focuses on social mechanics. The kingdom on the scum is filled with other players from all over the world, which make all be friended and interact with. You can subsequently unlock new abilities such as chat, enabling relationships and deeper connections. There are two main options for control move in the gear menu and three minor ways to adjust them. One handed. The players can do all fly movement and camera control with one hand. Camera is moved by dragging two fingers on the screen. Jumping is done by flicking in the direction that the players wish to go in. All the other movement is with one finger. Two handed. This mode allows the players to use you the best is a control squid way. The right side on the screen is used to move the camera. The left side of the screen is used to move your character. Jumping is done by pressing the right side button and hold down to use cape energy and rhymes. Fly seats to hand on by reversing the sides. The simple fly is the opposite so that movement is on the left and the camera is on the right. Inverse fly. This inverts their flight control. Invert camera. This inverts their camera movement. The score given to this game is 8.5. Its positive power is incredible as story. Its graphics, since his graphics go beyond being simple graphics, and it is true to the artist side that enhances this game, making this game a visual richness from the player. Additionally, the soundtrack and the sounds of the game made the environment perfect, gripping the player in a shot a way that is very much in keeping with the history and art of the game. The negative part of the game is that it does not currently have many platforms where it can be enjoyed apart from mobile phones, making this visual richness and the artistic richness of the game is like we have been able to explore much. Finally, it's not very clear what purpose is of the seasons has in the game. And Yet It Moves was released in 2009 by Broken Rules, an independent video game development studio created in the same year in the city of Vienna.
The studio is in charge of designing, developing, and publishing digital games focused on originality, simplicity, refined game mechanics, and high degree of interactivity. All of the above aimed at the importance of games as a cultural medium. Although it is a relatively new studio, it currently has five video games published and is the founder of a space for games exhibition, Sam Spilen. And precisely, their first video game released was And Yet It Moves. And Yet It Moves is a platform game with puzzle style in which you adventure with gravity and allows the user to turn the stage to solve challenging puzzles and thus overcome the levels. This is a single player game with an indie style that is designed for young people with an average age of 25 years. Because they are people with occupation and this game does not require as much time nor effort. In addition, they are more familiar with this time of platform games. However, its rating according to ESRB is for the whole audience because it contains a few scenes of violence and these are presented in an animation mode, so they are not explicit and allow all people to access. Furthermore, the game is available for Microsoft Windows, Mac OS X, Linux and Nintendo Wii. The protagonist of the game is unbreakable, although it's fragile because it's made of paper. When it impacts with any element of the universe, it breaks into small pieces but is reconstructed instantly at the last safe point of the route. Likewise, although there are no enemies present of fight during the tour, different threats are presented to him as the elements of the stage and the spaces to the void that will make the protagonist fall. The game is divided into four environments, each with a different visual theme. These environments, at the same time, are divided into 16 levels in which the player must reach the end of the stage and as they overcome them, the rhythm of the challenges increases. There is also a bonus phase and an additional one in the credits where the player can continue to play. The mechanics of the game are original and simple. At the beginning, a small tutorial appears in which some basic concepts, controls and the general objective are taught. As the character travels through the 2D world, he catches checkpoints that indicate which path to follow until reaching the end of each phase. It is also important to note that the levels are influenced by gravity alterations, so as the player spins the world, different objects and some animals fall. When he dies, the character will return a few seconds before the time he fell. The game has no time limit to reach the end, however, the time will be saved as a ghost that can be sent to the global sword table online. When this option is unlocked, the player can activate the speedrun mode, in which he can compete against the time or against previously recorded ghosts in each level, and perform a complete marathon across the stage. For the computer, with A and D, the characters move to the left and right respectively, and with W, he jumps. With direction arrows, you can rotate the world. For the game mode on Nintendo Wii, it is very intuitive. The player controls a paper man with the nunchuck and spins the world with the Wii Remote. In general, it is a very creative game with an innovative aesthetic proposal that allows the user to have a trip through different universes from opaque environments to colorful and abstract places. This visual experience connects immediately with the players and offers them really original puzzles. The mechanics of the game are very simple and intuitive and have no time limit. The player takes the game calmly and is a quiet and pleasant experience. However, it lacks narrative and it would be good to polish some graphic elements of each scenario. Therefore, and yet it moves, deserves an 8 out of 10.